Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my DIY friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and this is another episode of Can I Make It For Cheaper? A series where I take your suggested highly priced decor items and I find a DIY solution to dupe it in a high quality way and hopefully for one third of the cost. At the end, we are going to do a summary of the cost to really evaluate if I could in fact make it for cheaper. Maybe I can, maybe I can't but that is what this series is meant to find out now before we get into it I would like to quickly thank the sponsor of today's episode Cricut the ultimate crafty smart cutting machine <laughs> I'm excited for this because the Cricut machine is an integral part in making this dupe come to life so more on that magic later you'll also notice I filmed this episode at my mom's place who was my marvelous DIY buddy through this project because uh, I was stepping into some unknown territory for myself <laughs> and I was gonna need some expert help. You know, there just are some things I am not good at. Okay, that was not what you should have done. This project was quite interesting, so thank you for the challenge as always, my friends. With that said, let's get into this DIY dupe. Editor, roll the tape. Boom. loud. All right, Anthropology, you're back on the DIY chopping block, suggested by Stacy M for this Can I Make It For Cheaper episode. I am focusing on the very unique Jimena occasional chair. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Originally valued at $998. Look at that detail. Woohoohoo! I've never heard of an occasional chair. I'm assuming it's just maybe a chair that you occasionally sit on. <laughs> but we do need to talk about the price because this chair seems to have sold out in the States So it's no longer showing a price but on Instagram they did state it was $998 originally but then it was on sale for $558 which I'm sure why it sold out I, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go off the American price for this So let's use that price point to beat at $558 because I still think that's a lot of money for a chair So let's just do better than that to talk about this chair, I personally love it. Thank you, Stacy, for suggesting it. It's so unique and it's kind of kitschy, you know? It's like a chair you might have seen at grandma's house. This is like the updated 2021 version of that in a cool and hip way. This chair is definitely not for everyone and I, and I get that, but I picked this one out of the suggestions because I thought it was kind of cool and it would be a challenge for me because it's kind of crafty, but I enjoy a good challenge and I think this is gonna be fun to make, so. Can I make it for cheaper? Let's find out. To execute this idea, I knew I was going to need a chair. So like any good DIYer would do, I went to Facebook Marketplace and I found this beautiful wingback chair. So this is actually an Ikea chair. It's called the Strandmon. It's like a Digimon character, but furniture. <laughs> Ikea is selling this chair for $300 in store, but I found it for 80 buckaroos on Facebook Marketplace. Yes. <laughs> I just loved the color of it, thought this price was such a steal, so I bought it and later that day was in my home. Here it is looking so beautiful at my mom's house and now all I had to do was figure out how I was going to make this chair look like the anthro version. Regardless, I knew there was going to be sewing involved, which is why I packed up my truck and headed to my mom's for the week. Yeah, your girl doesn't know a lick about sewing, not a lick. Plus, I mean, Kenobi never complains too much because my mom's house is like literally his favorite place on earth. Dog friends, water, space to run around. So going back to the chair, my Facebook Marketplace version was in okay condition. I mean, it's pretty typical that you're gonna get some scuffs and wear and tear in a used piece. So I just had to give this chair a little TLC before I could get started on it. I gave it a good vacuum. Look at this lovely vignette. Like where am I? The secret garden, Narnia? And then I took it inside to give it a good spot clean with my spot cleaner in hopes I could get all of those stains out. I mean, I really scrubbed that chair. I actually love my spot cleaner. I bought it because of the dog, but this thing has come in handy quite often. So uh, I highly recommend. Here was a 
look at the chair the next day, the stains weren't completely gone, but honestly, not too bad. I couldn't really see them anymore, so I was in a pretty happy place saving $200 on this chair. All right, so let's talk about some of the materials that I bought to make this chair come to life. I thought about how to do this project a lot. Honestly, there are a lot of different ways to go about this. For the longest time, I was just gonna buy a chair slip, cover it so it would be easier to work on. But when I got the slip cover I ordered, it was so bad. It was so not right. I also thought about different materials you could use and I landed on felt because I thought it could be a fun material to work with and it would kind of give it that kitschy look we were going for. It just felt right, you know? <laughs> It just felt right. I also decided using my Cricut was definitely the way to go for this project to get all the cutout designs done properly. Like, I don't know how I would have done this project without the Cricut. So I had picked up three felt kits through Cricut that contained a bunch of fun, bright colors that I could use to create my designs. And then beyond my normal Cricut tools you get through your kit, I picked up this brayer that's great for rolling out fabric. Also got some fabric mats and a specific fabric cutting blade. Now, obviously I had a Cricut before this or I wouldn't have done this project this way. So in the same way that I don't really include the cost of my tools in Past Canada Make It For Cheapers, I'm not going to include the cost of my Cricut machine. I'm only including anything that I would have bought specifically for this project. So let's talk about this chair and how it needs to be broken down. Down because there's a lot of things happening on it. And what I love is as you can see from the website, there's actually three different versions of this chair. What I think I wanna do is kind of look at all three and then sketch down all of the elements that I want to pull out of this design. If it's me and I had the decision to do this, I am staying true to the original inspiration, but I definitely like the birds on the denim chair more. And I really like these little details on this chair too. They have kind of made like little flowers out of the dots and then they have these two little, I'm gonna just draw that. There's like a dot and then there's a two little leaves underneath it, which I think is adorable. This is not gonna be easy. This is, this is not gonna be easy. All right, so now that I kind of have a general idea of what I'm looking for, I can finally get into a Cricut design space and see what we have cooking and uh, what we can come up with to make this whole chair come to life. So let's go. I'm actually very amazed by how many templates that you can find throughout this and like how many different templates there are. There is literally something in here for everyone. I've never not found what I was looking for when coming into the Cricut design space. And that's saying a lot. Ooh, I like this flower. <gasps> Ooh, that's cute. Add, ooh, in this one. I also think it's insane that this machine can cut over 300 materials. Like I'm gonna own this for my entire life and never even like scratch the surface of what you can do with this machine. Like I'm never going to do this machine justice in terms of how much it can do. Now I'm going to admit something though while we're on this topic. Before I owned one, I thought the Cricut machines were really, really intimidating. Like I am not a tech savvy person at times and the mechanics around working it kind of seemed complicated and time consuming and I'm like standing here today telling you right now that I was wrong. <laughs> I just didn't give you a chance and now I see how misunderstood you really are. <laughs> Thank goodness. Anyways, all I'm trying to say is that I love my Cricut machine. I've created lots of DIY projects with it. And if you guys are on the fence about owning one, don't be because you wouldn't regret it. Now the machine I have is called the Maker because there are a few versions out there. It's very versatile across multiple mediums and I call mine Jiminy. All right, so it did take me some time to search through and find all the right design elements, but I did eventually find all of my pieces. Then we just had to decide on what colors we were going to use to cut our designs and properly measured out how big we needed them to be. From there, I could finally begin to cut. <laughs> You have to ask yourself, what do you believe in? It's only funny because we're cutting leaves. I gotta 
say it was a pretty tedious project. I mean, we had to measure, load the felt, cut it, weed it out, stick it to the chair. But I tell you, I used every last inch of material to cut those pieces out. There were times where my Cricut board was just made up of small fragments of cut material. I was determined to use every last drop of felt material. Okay, I wanted to update you guys on where the chair's at because a lot has happened, yet not a lot has happened. <laughs> Check it out. I love the direction that this is going in. I love the blues against the reds. And then we have these guys coming in on the fronts. We're just holding everything down with pins. We kind of have the main large elements that are gonna go into this whole chair. And then essentially it's kind of just filling it in at that point, but it's a lot of fun. So I think that's the most important part. Mom, yes. are you having fun? having fun working with you. Yeah, um, right? I always it's, have. It's called quality I, bonding I time with, with, with Jiminy. You. With Jiminy. And Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have I introduced you guys to all the little fur balls here? Let's see, where are they all? Oh, this is Smokey. Hi, buddy. Hi, sweetheart. And then we got our dear friend Kenobi. And there's Murdoch. Hi, buddy. Oh, hi, sweetheart. You're a sweet boy. You're the most docile dog ever. Do you give paw? No. It's a whole party here, but uh, yeah, we basically just need to keep doing the same thing over and over, over again. So I'll probably be working on this into the evening. So with that said, I'm gonna keep cutting and I will report back to where this chair is at tomorrow and hopefully I'm in a better spot. Okay. Good morning, DOA friends. So it is a brand new day, full of energy, full of life, and creative hope for this chair. I don't think I've ever been so creatively challenged in terms of like just having a vision because it was just like we were throwing colors up there, left, right, and center. It was tough. Now I can show you all the little pieces. So let me show you. Here's all the little elements that are gonna be going into the chair. All the flowers, all the designs. We have two types of birds. Um, we have these green guys up here. So at this point, we just need to lay it out on the chair and then start doing all of the stitching. It's cool, right? I love how vibrant it is. This, this part was the hardest, I think. It was feeling almost too busy. And then we actually had a bunch of red dots. All of a sudden, once you say like, they look like pepperonis on a cheese pizza, all that's all we could see was just cheese and pizza. We might've been hungry, but it's hard to say. It's really nice. Like it, it feels really balanced. It feels really colorful. And uh, it just feels like a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, so now I need to explain something quickly. Like I said earlier, originally I was going to buy a slip cover and then sew the elements onto the slip cover. I didn't have that anymore. So I thought I could stitch them onto the chair with a hook needle. Something like that was probably going to take forever. <laughs> so I thought, well, what if the fabric glue did such a great job that I didn't even need to bother stitching them on? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. I tested in a small area first, obviously. If this didn't work, I felt a combo of glue and stitching would work. So I had a backup. And while we were waiting for that to dry, we decided to take a little break. I know. Okay, everyone's happy. You ready for that? You're like a little muskrat. That's a big stick you got there, bud. Where are you going with that stick? You got this! <laughs> Race to the ball. The shark is winning! You having fun? So 
after all of that fun in the sun, because you guys deserve that moment, I came back, but the glue just still needed time to set up. So we decided to wait because I really just wanted to make sure this was the route to take before I proceeded with anything else. Learning to practice patience. <laughs> You're so loud. Do you mind? Such a camera hog. I had some reservations that the glue was going to work, like that it was gonna be strong enough that when you sat in the chair, it was not gonna like fall apart or eventually fall off. But I have to say that permanent fabric glue, she permanent. So you can see like this is not, this is not going anywhere. It is on there, it is stuck. So I feel really good about that. I'm glad we kind of waited, but we are doing some stitching today. We got a whole station here. Look how cute that is with the little, look like little French peas. Yeah. So that's a French knot. Yeah. So we're doing a bunch of French knots on the leaves. Um, we're gonna add some French knots onto the birds here. And then some of the flowers are just gonna get some embellishments. This big guy back here is gonna get um, some baby blue embellishments, like some stems that come out. I think this is just gonna transform this whole piece. So once we have all the stitching done, then we can take the glue and start really adhering it onto the chair. And then we're gonna be solid. I am gonna put all of my sewing skills to work. <laughs> it's gonna be great. It's gonna look great. It's gonna look exactly like yours. For this part, my mom sat me down and she taught me a bunch of different knots. These things just don't intuitively come to me. I'm more of a take a hammer to something and go smash, smash, smash. I'll smash it with a hammer. I did end up finding my own ways to do things. While she did the French knots, I started on some extra little areas. And although I went rogue, I think I found my way. And uh, I now feel like a sewing queen, let me tell you. And when we finished, we had these cute detailed flowers, the birds. Were all these details necessary? No, but I really loved it. And finally, it was time to add all the pieces onto the chair. So just like before, I applied the fabric glue to the back and stuck it in place. What I found is that you really needed to put a healthy amount onto the fabric for this to work. I do have something to say though about the gluing process. When we tested the day before with the little dots, there was a little bit of glue that came out the sides but we cleaned it up and based on what we saw, the glue actually dried clear. It didn't actually create any crusties or residue left on the chair. I sort of just assumed this would be the case again, uh, but it wasn't. And unfortunately it did end up showing up on the chair. <laughs> I think at this point, we just wanna see what this beautiful chair looks like all put together. So let's take a final look at the DIY. No, no. love this chair so much. It's kitschy, it's funky, it's full of life and color. Would this chair look so cute in anyone's space? 100%. It is so darling. But of course, in spirit of this series, let's talk about the real cost. As a reminder, the anthropology version of these chairs on sale was a total of $558. Calculated with their flat rate shipping and handling costs, it would have come to a total of $707. And pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this up. Adding in all the purchase materials, this DIY dupe came to a total of $245.86. I saved close to $460 DIYing this chair myself. Was mine perfect? No. I genuinely believe there are some elements to this execution that needed improvements. Like the glue application for one, there were some areas that needed some better attention, and the felt, it was a little different 
difficult to work with and over time I worry that the felt would begin to get fuzzy if it was rubbed against a lot. I did provide a good rub test on the dots and the back here for you to see that the glue did work with the fabric. Those pieces are not going anywhere. I think if I did this chair again, I wouldn't use felt. Maybe a thinner material would have been better. Ultimately, I love this chair. I love the patterns. It's cute, it's bright, it's kitschy in all the best ways. And maybe we call this a solid prototype or inspiration for what could be your next project. And as for the question, can I make it for cheaper? Sort of. <laughs> Maybe like a 2.0 could be better, but I'm not sure that my execution is there yet. I just hope that this idea could spark a DIY idea for you at home if you have a thrifted item and you're looking to zhuzh it up in some way. I hope that this gives you inspiration. DIY friends, thank you so much for watching this episode of Can I Make It For Cheaper? And do not forget, Can I Make It For Cheaper is decided by you, so make sure you send in your DIY submissions that you want to see me create on this series. You can email your suggestions to the indicated email in my description box with the title can I make it for cheaper or DM me on Instagram at DIY Danny. A big thanks again to Cricut for sponsoring this episode. All the materials and smart machine that I use are linked in the description box. I hope you found this inspirational to tackle your next big DIY project. Let me know in the comment section below and let me know what materials you would have used to create this DIY dupe. I'm so curious. As always my friends, stay positive, stay creative and Keep on DIYing. Bye bye.